Okay, so today I'm going to be showing you how to set up a new 64 emulator, which I've just recently discovered, known as Micro 64. So in comparison to some other emulators such as Vice or CCS 64 and other Commodore 64 emulators that I've covered on my channel in the past, this one is slightly different how we set games up, how we load games, how we look at video settings, how we emulate the sounds of the 1541 floppy drive. So it's a very capable and a very awesome emulator and I'm really happy to have found this one. So Check this video out for a brand new Commodore 64 emulation experience. Okay then, before I start today's Micro 64 Commodore 64 setup guide for Windows, if you liked today's video, make sure to hit notifications, subscribe and like so you don't miss any upcoming retro emulation content that I upload every day on my channel, just Jamie. And bear in mind, I'm a massive Commodore 64 fanboy. So we're looking at Micro 64 today. It's an emulator I've literally just come across and as some of you are aware, I'm always looking for new emulators. And this one is a new one to me. So this one looks like it came out in 2018. So we got the website here or rather a blog and we can download the micro64.zip. If we just download this one, And once you've downloaded micro64.zip, we're going to get a folder. So take a look inside the folder. We've got release. And inside of release, we got two versions for Windows computers. We got Windows 32-bit computers and Windows 64. So I'm using a Windows 64-bit computer. If you're unsure, just go to your search bar and type in system information. And under system information, it will tell you under system type, which type of computer you're running. As we can see, this is a 64 bit PC I'm running. So I'm gonna drag out the Win64 version of Micro 64 onto my desktop. Now let's open this up. And inside we've simply got micro64.exe, which is the executable file. We're gonna open this up, double left click. And here we go. So we're now inside a Micro 64. So what do we do with this? If we press the keyboard, we can go into the main menu. And from here, if you just use your cursor key to go down, go to options first. And first of all, let's go to video. If we go to full screen because we want to play Commodore 64 games or do a bit of programming in a full screen mode rather than this window mode, if we go to yes, we're going to get a full screen but as you can see this isn't right so i'm going to go back to no and if i come out of here by pressing escape on my keyboard just make sure save configure on just make sure save configuration on exit is marked as yes and save configuration and let's close out of here so in order to get micro 64 in full screen i find by right clicking on my desktop go into the display options and from here, under display resolution, I'm going to change this from 1080p to 720p, which is 1280 by 720. And to keep changes, and if we back out of here and open up Micro 64 again, or again, what we're going to do this time is go back to video by pressing get into the main menu, options, video, full screen, Okay, so now we've established how to make this into a full screen mode, I'm going to continue this setup guide in a windowed mode. So to exit out of video options, just press escape. Next thing that I'm going to look at is 1541 floppy. So this is, of course, the Commodore 64 floppy drive. If we go inside of here, 1541 sounds is currently set to no. If I go and select yes on this by pressing my cursor key, this will emulate the sounds and the mechanics inside of the 1541 drive. And also, if I scroll right down to the bottom for mechanics emulation, I'm going to turn this one to on and press escape to come back out. Just beneath this, we've got 1351 mouse, which is, of course, the official Commodore 64 mouse. If we go in here, we can actually activate this in order to emulate the 1351 mouse to use something like Geos, if that's your thing. 
So I'm going to leave this one to no. And if we just go down a little bit further, down to hardware presets. Now we got presets here, how you want Micro 64 to emulate. So the very early C64 I'm presuming is the 1982 original. Uh, C64, next one down is going to be a slight revision. And C64C is the Commodore I had as a kid, which is the Mark II model, which is almost the slimline version. And we've even got the Commodore 128-ish C64 preset here. I'm going to select C64C. Now, if you want to play games with a joystick or a controller, I use a Google Stadia. We just go down to joystick. And my Google Stadia controller, once it's connected to Bluetooth with my laptop, works just fine. Just note though, that Commodore 64 games, 95%, 96% were programmed to run from port two. So if you find your controls aren't working, then go to joystick swap and swap this over to yes and vice versa. So it escaped to come out. And also note that at the bottom just here, save configuration on exit, make sure if you want to save all these settings, make sure this is on yes. And just save configuration for now. So next thing I'm going to do is show you how to load some programs. So I'm going to go over to one of my favorite websites, which is itch.io, and this is a great place to pick up modern day Commodore 64 games. And I'm going to download the shoot em up destruction set by Cytronic. So we're going to go to downloads now. No thanks, just send me to the downloads and download. Now the reason I'm downloading this package is that inside of here, we got a disk image or several actually, uh, which are known as .d64s. We've got inside of here PRG, which is programs.prgs and there's several here. And if we go back out again, we got tape and these are represented with the file extension known as .tap. So for that reason, I'm going to show you the method of loading up each one of these file extensions. So what I'm going to do is go back into my Micro 64 folder and just drag and drop all three of these folders. So everything's nice and neat and in one place. Now, if I go back to Micro 64, I'm going to load up a disk image first. Like I say, disks are known as .d64s. So I'm going to go up to load whilst in main menu. And from here, we need to locate where those games are located. So the two dots just here will take you back. And the one dot at the top is going to take you to your C drive, as you can see. So just press enter and your cursor controls page up, page down. So my games are located on my desktop. So I'm going to go right to the bottom, which is users. Name of my computer is Jamie. And desktop is just here. Press enter. And my games are located in my Micro 64 folder, which is times 86 64. And I'm going to load a disk. So here's my disk folder. Press enter. So this is two sides of a disk. So I'm going to load this side A and press enter on that and insert it into drive A. Press enter. Now here's the contents of disk side A. So the programs just here, as you can see, or the actual programs to games themselves. So normally the contents of a floppy disk drive for Commodore 64 would likely just have one, probably two at best programs. Because this is a multi-game disk, little mini games rather, we got several programs here. So I'm gonna just go to the top and load the first one, which is shoot up destruction set. So press enter. And we got options here to either load this fast or load it normal. So I'm going to select fast and press enter. And as you can hear the mechanism of the 1541 drive. And just remember, if you can't control anything with your controller, just go back to main menu by pressing F9 and go down to options using your cursor keys and down to joystick. And from here, joystick swap yes and no and press escape to come back out and continue to go back into the game.
So as we can see, it's running just fine loading up that .d64, but the colors are a little bit off. So if you notice, we got scan lines. If we go to options and go to video, power emulation, we can actually change the way this looks. So by keeping this on yes, it's applying that filter and you can change the filter from mode. So right and left on your cursors, and we can even go to scan lines, add scan lines, double scan lines, and so on. Personally, I like this to no to off. So we're gonna go to press escape again to come out, escape again, and just save configuration, press enter, and there we have it. So from here, what I'm gonna do next is just go down to reset, and we got options to soft reset or hard to reset. So in order to take all the memory at the Commodore 64 emulator, I'm gonna to go to hard to reset and press enter. Okay, so next up, I'm gonna show you how to load a cassette image, which is also known as a .tap file. So, and load. And from here, we're gonna to need to back out because we're in the disc folder and down to the tape folder. And we got several different games in here. So I'm gonna just randomly load up flight of the albatross.tap. Okay, so this is now loaded into the data set or data set. So what I'm gonna do is type out the command load and press enter and it says press play on tape. So by nine, we can go down the data set or data set controls and press play from here. And there we go, it's now playing from the cassette tape. And just bear in mind, cassette tape images takes forever to load in comparison to disk images or .prg images, which I'm going to show you how to do in a sec. So just press F9 and what we're going to do is go down to reset again and hard to And finally, I'm going to show you how to load .prgs. Let's go to the main menu and we're going to go to load again and back out of the tape folder and into the PRG. And again, randomly, I'm going to select a uh, sat fight. So enter. And of course, we want a fast loader for this. So fast. F9 to come back out and this time we're going to go down to quit and that's going to exit Micro 64 altogether. So that's it for today's Micro 64 Commodore 64 emulation setup guide for Windows PC. Like I said at the start of the video, I'm a big Commodore 64 fan and I'm always nerded out over new emulators like this one. It's a very really interesting emulator and it reminds me of around 15, 16 years ago when I first discovered Commodore 64 emulation, which was pretty mind blown at the time, realizing I could play classics on a modern day PC. So if you liked today's setup guide, hit notification, subscribe and like so you don't miss upcoming Commodore 64 and various emulation content on my channel, Just Jamie. And also check me out on social media. I'm on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram and TikTok. But until next time, stay retro.